plate to potential nugget. Indeed, that uh, uh, I'm also curious about how people build habits. Uh, let's say, build, even if we take building empathy, uh, in your experience, what are the lessons we can learn from mythology, for example, on how we can start building some of the habits we haven't been possibly exposed to in our growing up years? See, this concept of habits is a Western idea. It comes Indian. Um, you see, habit is a bad word in Indian philosophy. It's a bad word. Therefore, you're continuous. Another word for habit is conditioned. I'm conditioned to do it. Conditioning, that's a Pavlovian response, right? A dog has a habit of salivating whenever the bell rings. And the West has made it a virtue. Action without thought is habit. Repetitive action without thought is habit. And if you look at the many of the cultures in the West, they are like domesticated animals. At a particular time, they'll get up and run. At a particular time, they'll get up. So there is, it's this kind of a, uh, they are on a treadmill all the time. And this is seen as virtue. You know, driving in the car with a coffee in your hand. Nobody sees in America that this is tragedy. It's a tragedy. You can't enjoy your coffee. You can't enjoy your drive. You have glamorized slavery. You have glamorized slavery. And nobody sees it. Because you are, all the Gurujis in their white coats with their chin, uh, what is that called, the fist on the chin photographs, you know, those photographs that you see, are telling you, therefore it must be right. Nobody's questioning, what is the habit? And habit has been somehow projected as a good thing. Indian thought is all about awareness. It's all about awareness. Why are you doing what you're doing? Why are you doing what you're doing? Why are you not doing what you're not doing? And once you're aware, then you realize what is of value to you and what is not of value to you. So you are not in a habit, then breaking habits becomes difficult. And then breaking habit becomes, there are good habits, there are bad habits. Habits are good and bad depending on context. You know, so you will find people behaving. In, that's why I always find, you know, when expats come to India, they have a tough time because the habit is suddenly in this new context they don't know. Because, oh my God, there is no place to run. There is no place to, oh my God, they don't have this thing. Because the habit, right, they become the animal. You have become like an animal. And habit really goes to the lower part of your brain, not the upper part of your brain. And your habit is about avoiding life. You do habits like... It's an addiction. It's like autopilot. It's an autopilot. No, and it's addictive. Like I have a habit of writing. But it's addiction. If I don't write, I get withdrawal symptoms. Which means I've trained my body to be in pain when I don't do it. And to get pleasure when I do it. And I'm not aware of it. I'm just doing it mechanically. So we are an awareness culture. Awareness, awareness, awareness. Not habit culture. Habit culture, empathy goes away. So it's just... You know, you, you, you see some of the Western coaches talking and I'm like, <gasps> it's like the sports coaches. And in India, we don't have a very big sports culture. One of the reasons because it is about this physical forming thing. And again, the Brahminical thing, it is, it is a very lower end of the spectrum. And talking about awareness, uh, building awareness, again, uh, any pointers to how people could go about improving themselves in terms of... I think observing awareness. other people. Observing other people, not from a, as a judge. Many people observe people as a judge. But to recognize with empathy, why is a person doing what he's doing? You know, why does a staff carry a particular kind of box? How do they carry their food? Why do they carry the food in a particular way? Why do they work a particular set of hours? Why do some people talk more and do less? And then you figure out and you see the dark side of it. And you call out, call it out, that I notice that you don't seem to be doing the work. And calling out very gently and compassionately, putting them aside and saying that, you know, I, I see through it. You know, I see through it. So I think it is very important. And I personally believe in darshan. Awareness, not self-awareness, but awareness of the other. You see, everybody tells me about Maslow's law, Maslow's law, Maslow's law. Maslow's law is obsessed with the self. It's all about the self. It is not, there is no other. There is no other. And the other is para, swajiva, parajiva. And from para, you have para, transcendent. From para, you have param, infinite. This consideration for the other does not exist in Western thought. It goes to the point of saying that if I create value for the shareholder, I will create share value for the uh, 
customer and the employee. And I asked people ultimately, when given a choice, whose value matters? Whose value matters? Given a choice, when you have Sophie's choice, the tough choice, that reveals who you are as a person. And everybody will say, of course it is me. I said, life is, you have decided that. It is not so simple. There are many people in the world who think very differently from you, but you've conditioned yourself into believing 